every time, and I mean every time, people doubt Bakaya Saka. He makes you look an idiot for it. And once again, when Arsenal needed it, he stepped up. And others did too. Kai Havertz. What a performance from him, especially when you move to the nine. We're going to talk about all that in a bit of detail. This is a match report, but I think it's going to be a little bit all over the place because I want to talk about the kind of real main elements of the game. I won't necessarily go moment for moment, especially as the second half was where all the all the action happened. Um, but, but please stop, whoever it is, Jamie O'Hara, whoever it might be, please stop finding more ridiculous ways to downplay Bakaya Saka because for the last three, four years, he's been one of the most, you know, one of the most exciting, devastating, efficient, consistent right wingers in world football for the last three years now. And you will keep finding new players to compare him to and you knew, you keep finding new things to judge him against. And he's just answering it every single time. And that's without going into the credit he deserves for his work rate, for his mentality, for his everything, for his ev- ev- so much. And, and you know what? Well, this isn't just a video on Bakaya Saka, but I just wanted to open with that. Please, can we stop always looking for reasons to bring this guy down? He is he's superb. He's been wearing the armband recently, of course, didn't today because Jorginho started. But it's such an amazing journey. And like I said on the Gooniverse podcast, I don't want us to miss what's happening with Bukayo Saka because it's a wonderful story. Now, we'll go into him in a little bit more detail when we talk about his kind of moments in the game. But look, Arsenal beat Southampton 3-1, and it wasn't pretty. It wasn't like Leicester last week. Leicester was a 4-2, at which we find ourselves at 2-2 from 2-0 up. But quite frankly, we were by far the better team. It was a 6-7-0 performance. This was a 3-1. This was a game where, yeah, we deserve to win. Yeah, we were the better team. But we were kind of miles off our best for me. I don't think we got to the levels that we had against Leicester, against PSG, and against some of the other teams we we faced early this season. Um, and I don't think we looked quite as in control. And I think the tweaks that Arteta made to the eleven felt very imbalanced and I think harmed us a lot more than I would have hoped. Partey playing right back, I'm not surprised. He, he's spoken about wanting right footers, right back, left footers, left back. Um, in the absence of White, Tom Yasser and Timber, Partey's going to start there. I didn't mind that. you got loads of depth at six. Not a problem. Partey did fine, by the way. I thought he'd invert more. He actually plays more of an out-and-out right back. Uh, Sterling came in. I thought he did fine. I, I really think Sterling was okay. Um, he wasn't amazing, um, but he definitely looked exciting at times when he got the ball and he was making their fullbacks kind of think and work hard. So a, a nice little shift from him. Of course, Martinelli had the big moment, which we'll talk about. Um, and then the big one was moving Kai Havertz back into midfield, dropping Trossard and bringing Jesus into the eleven. I'm not going to spend ages on this. So I'll try and say this as efficiently as possible. It might sound blunt, it might sound rude. I'm just trying to not spend loads of time talking about the player. Gabby Jesus is not, it's not happening for him at the moment. He's in the worst form of his Arsenal career, in my opinion. Um, I want him to do the simple things because everything else will come. The flair, the the strength, the turns, the twists, and even the goals, that will come. Do the simple things, Gabby, because I think he's lacking a little bit of... He, he looks lost. He, he's, he's looking like someone who's desperate to prove himself every time he goes onto the pitch. And he's looking like he's trying to deliver eight, nine, ten out of ten performances every time. And we're actually asking you to just give us a six or a seven because you've been giving us threes or fours. Build up to it. Um, Gabby Jesus is miles off it. And it's such a shame to see our best striker. And for me, one of the most informed strikers in the league right now, one of the informed strikers in the Premier League right now, basically being moved into midfield so that we can get Jesus some minutes. If anything, I'd rather you try Jesus in the Thames. Stop moving Havertz from his position. That's the one thing I'll say about Mikel Arteta. But he made subs that impacted the game. He made the right subs and we ended really strongly. But let's go through, I mean, what's there to go through the first half? You know, a set piece that was kind of loosely dealt with um, by Southampton. A couple of them that we sort of looked like we might do something. That was a hit, Jorginho strike from range. Southampton didn't do much. We're going to the second half. Could Saliba do a little bit better defending uh, Cameron Archer with that strike? I mean, I think there is a little bit of a foul on Sterling there, you know. I mean, look, it's one of those, sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. Uh, ball goes out to Archer. And again, I think it's a slight deflection, a slight touch on Saliba that takes it away from Raya. But maybe I'm being really harsh here. That was a fantastic finish by Cameron Archer. I've only seen one angle of the replay, so apologies if I got that wrong. I was actually at the game. Hence, by the way, this is why this video is out so late. I was actually at the match from wearing Marshall shirt. Um, I was at the game. Um, had a great time. A- atmosphere was good. And, 
yeah, it, you know, I took Emma for the first time, so we had a great time. Um, but yeah, Arsenal certainly made us sweat for it. Um, we go one nil down. This is where Kai Havertz and Saka are probably going to take up the rest of this video now for me. Because those two, I think we like to praise, you know, um, we like to praise quality, you know, in terms of a cross or a pass or a finish or a dribble or whatever. But the amount of situations that Havertz and Saka were making for us through sheer want, through sheer drive, nicking the ball high up the pitch, creating transitions, not letting Southampton breathe, trying to just force errors out of them every single time. And I think pretty much every single one led to an attack or a shot or two of them certainly led to goals. I felt that Bakai Saka and, and Havertz just for me, embodied the fight that we wanted to see as Arsenal fans. And now every player on the pitch was really leaving it out. I thought Calafiori, despite some one-on-one defending at times, some you know, stand-up defending, you want a little bit more from him. But when it comes to going into a tackle, reading the game, driving into tight spaces, showing composure and a good first touch, Calafiori was magnificent today. I probably have him third man of the match behind. Declan Rice was very good as well. But I'll probably have them just behind Saka and Havertz. And you could fight for who was man of the match with those two. Because when the ball's playing to me, feel Saka just nicks it. He gives it straight to Kai Havertz. And do you know what I love about that goal from Kai Havertz? Is he just said, F this. He just went, let me, I'm running a goal. It's there. Let me just wallop this into the back of the net. And it's a fantastic finish. It's a really great strike. And that strike, which was the show of his quality, Mixed with his fight off the ball, his first touch, his combination play, everything was so nice. And even when he was playing in midfield, he did okay. But you could see he was trying to be a creator. He was crossing with his right foot, crossing with his left foot. He was out of the touchline at times. I thought it was just such a waste of his stature and his presence. And the threat he is as a goal scorer right now. Look at the goals he scored against Wolves, putting his head where it hurts. PSG, putting his head where it hurts. PSG, probably more than the Wolves one. But you get my point. You know, being someone that you can hit in the box and... I felt we really, really missed that until we eventually, you know, decided to take Jesus off because he was having a poor game. Now, this is where Arteta gets credit. So it's 1-1 and and Arteta, to be fair, makes the changes to impact the game positively. So Trossard comes in for Jesus. Marina comes on for Jorginho. And there's one more, Martinelli on for Sterling. Really good changes because Martinelli's kind of been building in some good form. I thought Sterling did okay. Um, Marino, I thought, gave a really nice balance. By the way, a lovely cameo from Marino. Did some really nice things in tight spaces. You know, pinged a lovely ball over the top to Martinelli, which was great to see. And just feels a really good fit. There's one underlap he did when he just put the ball into the box. And I thought, that's what we're going to want him to do. He looked very Xhaka out there. Xhaka in his last season or two, uh, which was good to see. So... Marino definitely made a difference. Martinelli did. But the big thing was getting Trossard in the team. Trossard did okay. He did some nice things. Did some, you know, not great things. But the big thing was he allowed Havertz to go up front. Um, and I thought he did a... And when I say we saw a 4-4-2, but just allowed Trossard to drop a bit deeper and Havertz to just go and chase, you know, chase defenders, uh, you know, run the line, go and sort of play some one-twos and, and, and bounce the ball off people, or be the battering ram so that players could play off him. And Havertz kind of really came to life when we needed him um, at 1-0 down. Then there's Bakaya Saka, who I mentioned at the start of the video, but, you know, there's an assist by just winning the ball back and giving it to Kai Havertz. Then there's a real assist where he's seen Martinelli at the back post and whipped in a fantastic ball. It's, you know, if Ozil does that, if David Silva does that, it's just a wand of a left foot, that cross, and he's picked out Martinelli brilliantly. It's a fantastic goal. And have um, Kai, uh, Bukayo Saka is just turning creator as well. He is someone who's saying, I will shoulder responsibility whether you want me on the end of things or you want me to make things happen. In the absence of Erdegaard, we maybe have missed that cross. Or he, Saka's always had that cross in him. But last season was a real get out of jail card, you know, finding Trossard at the back post, Havertz at the back post when we beat Brentford 1-0. He has that ability to you know, dig that cross out and find someone at the back post. And Martinelli kind of read it perfectly, knew what to do. But he's turning creator as well in so many other elements of his game, Bakaya Saka. The one-twos, the combinations, the some of the passes he plays and just getting into areas where he's saying, I'm happy to shoulder creative responsibility. And it's fantastic to see that from Bakaya too. You could play him in midfield in the 10 and he'd still look brilliant because he's, he's such a complete footballer. And of course, he then gets the third goal when uh, they make a bit of a mess of it and he just sort of runs in to just, yeah, side-foot it into the, into the far, far, low, far corner. 
and win it for Arsenal with a, with a third goal and a 3-1 win. It what was a, a weird performance in which the changes for me didn't really work, though I can understand Partey right back. Um, and ultimately, I think it's three points, it's three goals, it's... Uh, it's a it's a good win. It's a, a three one in the Premier League will always be a good win, but we just weren't at our scintillating controlled best. Either the football's gonna be kind of really exciting and you lose a little bit defensively, but you know, you're peppering the goal. Or it's a slightly more bland affair, but they're not getting anywhere near you and you're controlling it and you get the first, you get the second, and it's job done. And I felt like Arsenal were kind of neither of those. We were a little bit frantic without really creating enough. Um, but ultimately, we kind of grabbed hold of the game, you know, once Havertz got the equaliser. And, you know, shout out to Kai Havertz because he got it at a really crucial moment. I think if we don't score in that 10 minutes after, I think it becomes a really long, difficult afternoon. Um, but Kai Havertz just made sure to take his opportunity, he saw goal and smash into the back of the net. So well done to him. Look, I'm going to leave it there. There's probably a lot more I can say. Forever Arsenal will be out tomorrow, so I'll go into more detail there. Um, but yeah, look, well done Arteta on the subs, though I think he got the 11 wrong. Um, and well done to, you know, Calafiori, Kai Havertz, Bakayi Saka, Declan Rice and a few others who kind of really drove Arsenal through this and just found a, found three points in what wasn't our best performance, but was certainly one good enough um, for the win. So, yeah, everyone, hope you enjoyed this. If you missed out on the podcast on the Gooniverse, I'll uh, leave that on the end card so you can go check that check out that podcast with the amazing Harvey Gration and uh, Graham as we talked to fullbacks with Timber and Calafiori lighting up Arsenal season so far. Um, and, yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Big thanks, everyone. Catch you in a bit.